Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be work Q. Well, Composer X is George Crum, the late George Crum, the great American composer who invented his entire, an entire musical language that he exploited throughout his career and work Q is Macrocosmos 3, better known as Music for a Summer Evening. Now, Crumb's music is extremely referential to all kinds of different things. I mean, and he wrote a series of things, you know, in that Macrocosmos series. There was the American songbooks, there were the madrigals, there were, you know, one thing after his Lorca settings, all kinds of stuff like that. And he worked within these media. He was fundamentally a composer of chamber works and a composer for the keyboard, but in a great, greatly expanded keyboard, amplified pianos with all kinds of fascinating playing techniques and avant-garde sonorities. But his music is always approachable. It's always, it's no matter how crazy it is, I mean, it's not always tonal, but it's approachable. It's always about something and expressive of something. And, and the music for a summer evening is a case in point. But the title tells us some of the referential clues. Macrocosmos comes out of Bartok, his micro, microcosmos. So that was the immediate inspiration. And music for a summer evening itself is scored for two amplified pianos and a wild selection of percussion. Um, and the obvious progenitor of this work was Bartok's Sonata for two pianos and percussion, which doesn't have the amplification, but which is otherwise scored for the same purposes. And the last time, well, the last time but one, I've seen it many times, Music for a Summer Evening, it's performed rather frequently, given the extraordinary demands it makes, both on the performers and the instruments, and assembling it all together, but it's just a miracle a miracle of timbre and texture and, and expressive power. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. This, the, the performers have to do all kinds of interesting things. They have to get up and run around and they sing and they, they hum and they, and they hit things and smash and bash and they pluck the piano and they thunk and go. It's really cool, really, really cool. There's nothing like it in the repertoire. And the first time I heard it, it absolutely blew my mind. It was the non-such recording um, with, with uh, the, what was it, the Contemporary Music Ensemble or whatever they're called under, under Weisberg or Weisweinheit. I don't even remember. You, you guys will remember who it is. But it's a, it was a beautiful performance on CD. It was coupled, I think, with Ancient Voices of Children, which is another work that really could have been here because his vocal works, his text settings are just as extraordinary as his keyboard music. Um, and that was, that was what was typical of the man. Uh, really, really fantastic music um, that deserves enormous exposure. I mean, it sort of lives in a contemporary music ghetto, but, but every time, well, here's the thing about that contemporary music ghetto that I really wanna make very, very clear. There are, are many, many composers who wrote extraordinary music, who developed their own personal styles, which is really kind of a romantic thing, right? The idea that, you're, that your music has to be your music, it has to be your kind of thing, was an outgrowth of the sort of romantic virtuoso tradition. And, and Crum um, was one of those guys, and he, he evolved this, this style of advanced singing and playing techniques and it's his nobody else sounds like him um, and uh, you know funny the funny thing about it is that i have taken people to see crumb concerts who know nothing about classical music whatsoever and they adore it they absolutely adore it i had a very very close friend who unfortunately passed away a few years back who was who was my my really my, my dearest friend, a, a terrific, terrific person um, who had a very minimal education, um, like he left school, like the fourth grade. He had a terrible life, a sad life and whatnot, but he was a great guy, he worked with me. And he loved music. He just loved music. He was an incredibly musical person. And, and we went to see George Crumb and he was absolutely floored. And then we got to meet Crumb 
and and they got on very well. I mean, you know, Crumb is was the nicest guy in the world. I mean, he was just just a really genuine character, and uh, he liked to borrow my maracas. I had a really good pair of maracas from Venezuela that he used in a couple of his recordings that were on Bridge Records, and and it, it was fascinating to me. And recently at uh, Lincoln Center, there was a Crumb sort of festival just before he passed away, actually. I'm so happy he was able to see it before he finally, he finally, he finally passed away. And I went and I, I took another friend of mine uh, who was also completely unfamiliar with the world of classical music. And we actually had taken, taken him to two things where they had crumb pieces on the programs. And he too was just thrilled by the stuff because that's the kind of music it is. It, it, it's directly experiential. Um, to anybody who's sensitive, and I find it rather depressing that that you know the classical music, contemporary music ghetto kind of prevents the wider world, the wider public of receptive individuals, from hearing this music because of the way that it's done, because it's done in such a a, a cultural ghetto. It's really a pity. It really is a pity. No matter what we do, um, you know, you can only do. You can only. You can only help it break out of the ghetto one listener at a time. But in any case, this is definitely one of Crumb's most characteristic and greatest works. Um, it's gorgeous, gorgeous music, and I recommend it to all of you and to the god Kankrazan, saying to him, listen, you are not going to eliminate every piece of classical music but for this one work, because this is only one facet of this extraordinary language that Crumb evolved, although a very typical one. We still need to have all of the vocal works. We need to have Black Angels, the string quartet. Oh my God, we don't want to lose any of that stuff. We have to be able to hear the, the extraordinary voices of these wonderful contemporary composers who evolved their own means of expression and one which really has not had the opportunity to reach its its maximum audience. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.